Good afternoon and welcome to the Wall Street Crossover Show with uh, Darren Sinden, market commentator at Admiral Markets. How are you this afternoon? Very well, thank you, Zach. Being blown around the city today? Yeah, I think you were right when you said before the programme, autumn has arrived earlier. That's so right. Yes, it, like that. we, missed, we obviously missed the summer. Um, right, OK, we'll go through to uh, what's the first slide today, data released over the European, European session. Uh, Spanish unemployment, May uh, 118,000 versus uh, forecast of 100, down 115,000 and uh, the price, well, it's sort of basically hanging around the same levels? It is, but I think it's, it's basically, uh, uh, it's down. That's, that's, mm. that's the key thing. And you know, the Spanish data has, uh, of late, has been, has been, been improving. I think they've, they've had, I think I'm saying six or seven months now of, of declining unemployment there. We've, we've seen some great numbers earlier this week. So, you know, bearing out the theme, really, that the, the, the countries that have been through the worst in austerity are perhaps going to be the ones to uh, to come out the cleanest on the other side. The other point, I suppose, is that the this figure's been getting better even before the effects probably of the weaker euro. Yeah, so absolutely. if that kicks in, I mean, it could be party time. Yeah, it could. And if you put in a bit of, a, you know, QE upside as well, it could be very good news for Spain. Um, the, that isn't necessarily reflected, though, that sort of improving picture in Spanish unemployment in these uh, Eurozone CPI numbers. And though um, this measure of inflation, just in case anyone's in any doubt, consumer price uh, index, and although the year-on-year -year measure for May was up 0.3% and ahead, therefore, of the forecast of 0.2% and the prior reader flat, it's not exactly uh, you know, a race back to rising prices. And uh, you know, it's quite a marginal improvement, um, whilst it's a positive number. Um, is, you know, or a flat lining all over yeah. the Western world, basically. Or most, I mean, many developed countries just uh, dead as a dodo on, on the inflation yep. front. Um, well away from the 2% the targets that most of the world's central banks are trying to look at. And then um, another positive number here in the UK, uh, the UK Construction PMR, Purchasing Managers Index for May, uh, came in at 55.9. Uh, pretty decent beat of the 55 forecast and, and well ahead of the of the figure for April. So no, no hiccup uh, from the general election at all. I mean, they were just building away. Didn't didn't care about anything there. Uh, well, they were in the commercial side. The, the last month's figures suggested that um, uh, that uh, that the domestic or the house house building had, had suffered in the run up to the general election. Perhaps there were people talking and perhaps planning applications weren't being pushed through. I haven't had a chance to dig down into the nitty gritty of that number. But it's impressive anyway. I mean, yeah, oh, it could, they could have been a, it could have fallen off quite sharply, but it, it's just no, kept, it's, kept it's, on it's going. carried on going. But then again, if you look at the window here, uh, we can see everywhere in London is cranes. So or are cranes. So uh, it's not that surprising, perhaps. Right. OK, well, um, let's go on to the next uh, slide here. The FTSE 100 movers. Uh, the stock that uh, people used to love to short and uh, didn't do very well on shorting, uh, Wolseley, um, building supplies, I suppose, yeah. uh, up 2.4%, still going from strength to strength on the fundamental side. It uh, doesn't look like it's going to end, really. And I suppose they have the U.S. You have, they have the U.S. exposure as well. Yeah, absolutely. So it's their interim management statement today, uh, very positive, very well received. And just as a few figures here, uh, revenues were up 12.4 percent year on year on a like for like basis. Uh, in the U.S., like for like sales were up 8.3 percent. So going great guns over there, and uh, trading profits on a headline basis again up 20.3 percent. It's incredible, isn't it? Yeah, it's, it's very impressive. Um, obviously, uh, you know the strong dollar has been a beneficiary to them and the American growth as well. But nonetheless, it's not as if they haven't got competitors. Um, just shows you what a decently well-run company is. I, w I hadn't looked at the price for a while. When I saw they were north of forty pounds today, I almost fell off my seat. Yeah, I was. So. I would have. I would have bet on sort of thirty-two or thirty-three. No, so it's really. It's a stealth riser that one. It is absolutely, and, and one I'm sure you know. If you're an owner, you're in no hurry to sell. Yes. <laughs> um, and then moving on to uh, to British American Tobacco, as we talked last week here about. Uh, Imperial Tobacco being involved in a, in a deal that buying three or four brands off of uh, the merging US tobacco companies. Um, there's a flip side to the tobacco industry this week in, in as much as um, British American tobaccos have lost a class action uh, in, in Canada, in Quebec to be specific. Talk is that they could face up to five and a half billion pounds worth of damages and claims. Um, to put that into some kind of context, operating profits in 2014 were four and a half billion. So it's a substantial sum that they're possibly going to be on the hook for. Uh, it's not certain that that's going to happen. And as you said earlier, they'll 
they were bound to appeal and drag this thing out in the court. Yes, I think that it, that may not be settled within our lifetime, uh, given the way these things tend to work. But uh, um, yeah, but uh, but it is interesting that still the the the, the, the FTSE has been down, and uh, um, you know that has not been a defensive play, obviously uh, uh, for no, today. No, no, and uh, the the old problems of uh, big tobacco haven't gone away, it seems. Yeah. So and the other actually the other final point was just uh, the smoking ban in China, which I'm, I'm not sure how how strictly that'll be enforced, but. Uh, that is probably, in, in a way, a, a greater threat to earnings than even paying 5.5 billion pounds. I think you're probably right there, yeah. So uh, what else have we got today? We've got the M&A rumours and movers. Uh, okay. well, I just thought we'd look for a change today rather than pick a specific stock. We've been obviously just a couple of days into June, so we've had a chance to sort of digest what happened in May. It's quite interesting, I think, to note then that May was a record month uh, for M&A in the US. A total value uh, of deals done worth $243 billion. have to be a little bit careful about these numbers because it depends who we take an equity value, debt value, etc. These figures are from Seeking Alpha, and I think that's basically everything but the kitchen sinking there. Um, if we're looking to see how um, that, that sort of stands be with previous records, May 2007 was the, was the previous high, uh, 226 billion, the total value of deals done then. And prior to that, January 2000, we struck $213 billion worth of deals. So 200 billion plus is the danger zone. Well, possibly. Has been the danger zone. Yeah, it looks like it. We'll come to that in a moment. But if we look at just the, sort of the trend, uh, the first quarter of 2015 was 20% 20 per, 20 ahead of the same period in, in 2014 in terms of deal value. Uh, and the total uh, in 2014 was itself 45% over that scene in 2013, according to stats from Goldman Sachs. Um, they point out a, a few things, really, that... Um, that have helped things, but what they term benign conditions. So confidence from CEOs in terms of making deals, strong equity markets always a help because if you're issuing paper uh, and you want institutional backing, if you know if the markets are feeling bullish, that's got to be good news. Of also availability of funds, it doesn't seem to have been a shortage of. Uh, well, they're sitting on piles of cash. They're apparently. sitting on piles of cash. Uh, you know, private equity has been happy to help out, and banks have been quite keen to lend money. Um, that's also probably got something to do with this. Um, acquire a share price is doing well after deals um, you, know, you know it's good news if you can you know do a deal see your share price go up encourage so the you. market is sort of in favor of these it things. is it is yes although although maybe it's not always the best judge yep. um, in terms of drivers cross-border deals sector consolidation have been the have been the main drivers of, uh, for, for this MA boom um, it probably would have been rather more if there hadn't been a few tax inversion deals uh, scuppered yeah. It would Absolutely. have been through the roof. It Absolutely. would have been like four, yeah. three or four hundred million. It, it billion could then. easily have fit those figures. Um, and we're not done yet by the sounds of it for, uh, for 2006. And recent rumours uh, are in the auto sector with, uh, with Tesla, the maker of, uh, of electronic cars run by uh, uh, Elon Musk linked with another big tech company Google. Well, I'm, I'm keen on that because I think Apple are going into the, uh, into the car area, so Google probably retaliate with the move on Tesla. Quite possibly. Um, and, if, and if there were to be another, another suitor, it might be Fiat Chrysler because they're said to also be looking for, for partners in that space. Just finish this slide with a, a word of caution, though. In 2007 and 2000, the market sold off sharply six months after the M&A records were made. And I think you used the phrase... Buying at the top. Yeah, well, so, you know, buyer beware, perhaps, and, uh, you know, maybe in November we'll have a look back and see and see how we stand. OK, all right. Uh, just to, f I think, finish off here. Oh, with two more slides, actually. Yeah. US data points to keep an eye on, first of all. So we've got uh, the purchasing managers index for services, having had the, the manufacturing PMI yesterday. Uh, for, this is for May 2015. Uh, a forecast is for 56.5 uh, versus the prior read of 57.4. So a bit of a slowdown on the, on the services side. And then perhaps the more important figure, which is balance of trade for April 2015, uh, and a forecast of negative 44 billion versus the prior read of uh, negative 51.4 billion. Um, the, the trade figures have been thrown out in the States by the by the, the issues in the West Coast ports and so there's something of a rebalancing now and a catch up and also the, the cold winter um, was a bit of a hindrance. So a few excuses. Well there are a bit of seasonality creeping yeah. in um, but uh, you know as long as they're sort of trending back towards an even keel then uh, that will be good enough. And then the final slide for today pre-market movers and levels. Now, I have to bear with me for my pronunciation here, but in terms of uh, pre-market movers, Manitowoc, uh, MTW ticker in the US, around $19.75, um, up about 2.36% this morning as uh, an activist hedge fund, Glenview, uh, increases its stake 
above 7%. And the feeling is here that they could well agitate for shareholder value and try and you know, uh, get some benefits for existing shareholders. Right. Uh, and then um, a little uh, tech marketing company called Tube Mogul, talk my as well, ticker is Tube, T-U-B-E in the US, down 6.18%. Um, and, and they're basically down because they've announced, uh, or proposed anyway, a sale of shares by the company and existing stockholders. Um, in the States, you can put these things forward without having to be too specific about the terms, but uh, on, on the, the document I saw this morning, they're talking about perhaps selling as much as $75 million worth of stock. That's around 14 percent of the company uh, so they've been knocked by 6.18 percent um, and I guess uh, you know these growth stocks if if uh, if they have any hiatus in terms of what they're doing then they get hit hard so down over six percent at the moment probably want to keep an eye on in the main session and then as far as levels are concerned today uh, in the in the European equity session we're, we're a bit weaker so uh, we're back below 7,000 in the FTSE and in terms of a downside level I've picked out 6,810. It was last month's low. I, yes, exactly. But I mean, I think we bounced, we, we've turned around, we've sort of we've come back from the brink on that. The FTSE was, I think, down 1%, but it's sort of uh, yep, but, um, bounced back a bit. But, but uh, obviously the Greek situation is not going to help. It's not, no. And if we're going to make new lows, we'll probably need to go back through there. Mm. In terms of the upside, 69.75 and obviously 7,000 above. Uh, for the DAX, a uh, slightly tighter range than we've had for a while. I've gone with 11,270 on the downside and 11,418 on the upside. And, you know, 11,800 seemed a long time ago, as far as that's concerned. S&P and the Dow, not any great shakes or change here, really. Sticking with 2,100 for its round number uh, resistance or support, rather, in, uh, in the S&P so on the downside. And 2,121, just tighten that slightly. Uh, we need to get through there. So that might be something to a break out of that range. Might be worth chasing. Is that? Yes, I think. Well, I think I think I'd you know pay pay quite close attention if it, if it does move, uh, you know, below or above those numbers. And for the Dow, seventeen thousand nine hundred and twenty-four on the downside, and eighteen thousand one hundred and thirty. And I think both of these, uh, you know, both both those US indices really looking for a bit of you know directional cue. So obviously, the payrolls coming in later this week. Probab possibly st taking out stops below the big numbers, below 2,100 and below 18,000, and then taking it up after that, something something nasty well, like well, that. Well, it could be. Remember, that, you know, on, on payrolls, as often as not, the first move is not the right <laughs> it's one. It's the wrong one, yes. Uh, so uh, so that, there's, there's quite a possibility of that, I guess. Um, if we move move over to the currencies, euro, dollar, um, euro's firmed um, in the last, well, overnight, really, and again into the to the uh, European session. So 109.15 on the downside, and I've uh, picked out 110.44 on the upside. Um, Relatively strong, really, given well, the well, is really given a, the, yeah. the the fundamentals or the fear in the market. Yes, and given should be near should be near 105. You would have thought, really. Well, I mean, certainly, you know, last week when it was trading down to 108 and testing, perhaps you know, looking like it could test below, you wouldn't have. You wouldn't have had too many people with naysayers about yeah. that. Um, if we move over to uh, to the Aussie dollar, r relatively unchanged on you know on the uh, no change from the Reserve Bank of Australia today. So we've got 76.17 as our downside level, plays 76.73 on the upside. Again, I think just looking for some kind of impetus, some some directional cues there. Uh, dollar yen is the mover, or has been really in the last few days. Uh, 124.40 on the downside plays a new big figure, 125.05 on the upside. And so just rampant, really? Yeah, I, I think, you know, you'd have, to, you'd have to assume that with any negative catalyst for the yen, uh, we'd, we'd, see, we'd see that 125 figure taken out. Having said that, the Japanese numbers were good this morning, and yet the yen still weakened. Mm. Um, and then on cable, uh, sort of a, continuing to slide back towards 150, unfortunately, 151.65 on the downside and 152.70 the upside. That honeymoon. So that's a surprise, really, between the euro, the euro and, and sterling. Bit of a surprise there, I think. Uh, yeah. Yes, I think maybe you could you could say from from from, from Cable's point of view that the, that the honeymoon period after the election is over, and now we're waiting to see uh, perhaps what George Osborne says in his budget. Um, but yes, euro strength is is uh, probably the surprise of the week. Yeah. OK, well, that uh, hopefully wraps up the Wall Street crossover show. Thank you, Darren Sindon, uh, market commentator, Admiral Markets. And uh, we'll see how the markets develop this, e this afternoon.